praise the Lord Church. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. I take this opportunity to welcome you once again in the house of the Lord. Feel that you are most welcome. Before we hear the word of God this day, we are going to welcome our choir to make one of the past recorded uh, song which has been of great blessings to all of us. Christians, I want to welcome you once again in our service as we share the word of God this day. My name is Andrew Karanja and this day uh, it is a very another great day and I'm blessed by our almighty God. I have the joy of salvation. God has been so gracious, has been so good uh, in my life and that is why this morning I'm very grateful to him for the gift of life and also the gift of salvation. Uh, let us pray so that uh, we can start, we can hear the word of God. Uh, this is the ACK, Nika Memorial Church. Feel that you are most welcome. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are so much grateful for another opportunity that you have given us to hear your word. Our prayer of faith is that you are going to speak to each and every one of us in the language that we are going to hear and also you explain your word in a way that all of us we are going to understand it and also so that we can be the hearer and also the doer of your word be with us as we share and speak to us as you speak to your people also speak to me this we pray in the name of christ our lord amen brethren this is another day and we are going to hear the word of God that is coming from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 start reading from verse 1 to verse 7 2 Timothy chapter 2 start reading from verse 1 to verse 7 you then my son be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier to get involved in civilian's affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Similarly, if anyone competes another team, he does not receive victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive share of the crop. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Our theme of the day is be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong 
in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Brethren, from what we have learned from the book of 2 Timothy, this was the letter that Paul, the servant of God, as he called himself, also an apostle, he wrote to Timothy as he encouraged him. He encouraged him to be a God servant. In chapter 1, he reminded Timothy of the faith that he learned from his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. And Paul persuaded Timothy, My son, let that faith remain in you as God served. He also encouraged him through three ways. I am going to say it here. One of the things that Paul said to Timothy, as you be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, Timothy, you need to be strong in the faith that you profess in Christ Jesus. In other words, Timothy, he was told to be strong in Christ Jesus. He needed to stand firm. He needed to be well grounded in Christ Jesus. Because there are so many heresies and false teachers. And here Timothy, he was told to be strong in Christ Jesus. In other one, he was told, all other ground are seeking sun. They are shaking. But when he was well grounded in Christ Jesus, he will not be moved or swayed by anything. And here Paul told Timothy, in the midst of challenges, in the midst of hardship and persecution, Timothy, you need to stand firm as soldier of Christ. Number two, Paul said to Timothy, Timothy, whatever you have heard from me, whatever I have taught you, you need to put it into practice by entrusting it to a reliable man. And those reliable men, they will continue carrying on, carrying on and carrying on. Here Paul, he was telling Timothy, Timothy, be doer of the one and not only here. And also he wanted for Timothy to put it into practice. Christians, we also need to put into practice the word of God that we have been learning in the church. And number three, Timothy, he was told by his spiritual father. Timothy, endure suffering. Timothy, endure hardship. In chapter 1 and verse 8, we could see Timothy being welcomed by Paul. And Paul said, I welcome you to join me in my suffering. Here Paul wanted Timothy to be assured in the ministry that he is going to suffer. In the ministry, he will meet so many challenges, but it is his responsibility to endure suffering. And Paul used three illustrations of which I'm going to use to put more emphasis on our theme that we need to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Example or illustration number one, Paul said to Timothy, be like a soldier. And in verse four he said, none one serving as a soldier get involved in Severian affairs. Here Paul used illustration of a soldier who is in active service. And here Paul said to Timothy, this soldier, what he does, he wants to please his commanding officer. We are called as a soldier of Christ, as a Christian today. And what we need to do, we need to understand this soldier who is in active service, maybe he is in the war. Us Christians, we need to understand that we are in the war. As a believer, as a Christian, as a born-again Christian, we need to understand that we are in the war, fighting with the evils, fighting with this flesh, or fighting against sins. We are in the war with the devil, fighting against the powers and the principalities 
and the rulers of darkness. And also, we need to understand we are in the war with the world. How? We need to understand we are in the war with the, in the world fighting against being conformed by its patterns of the day. And so, brethren, as a soldier, we need to be strong in the service that we are in. And as a Christian, we need to be strong as a Christian soldier of Christ. And by so doing, we need to be having the characteristics of soldier. One, we need to be willing to serve with the Christ. Paul said to Timothy, be willing to serve for the sake of gospel. We need to, to be having that willingness to serve because of Christ. Another characteristic or quality of a soldier, he or she need to stand firm with one another. As a Christians, and especially at a time like this we are in, we need to stand with one another. In the midst of challenges and, cha and problems, we need to stand with one another. This strong soldier, he or she, focus on their jobs. Here, our job is the call, our salvation, our Christianity, our services to God. We need to be focused in that we are called upon and avoid any distraction that can distract us not to achieve what we would like to achieve. The soldier who is in active service, he or she praises his or her commander. We need to live a life that is praising our commander as a soldier. The illustration number two. Paul uses the illustration of someone who is in the race. He said, this strong believer, this strong Christian competes like an authority. But here, according to God's rule, authority who is in the race, he competes with or he learns according to the rules and the regulations of the race. Here as a Christian, what we need to understand, we need to understand that we need to understand that we need to, go, to learn according to God's rule. We need to learn according to God's rule. In the, in the letters, in the letters that we have read, verse 5, Paul compares the Christian life with authority who is in competition. And he said, we are not com co competing with one another, but we are completing the race. We are completing the race that God has given and be rewarded. And for this reason, brethren, we must keep the rule and the regulation, lest we will be disqualified. The other illustration Paul used is the illustration of a hard-working farmer. The illustration of hard-working farmer. And Paul here said in verse 6, the hard-working farmer should be the first to receive the crop. So here Paul brings the picture of a hard-working farmer. So as a Christian, we need to work hard because of our salvation. We need to work hard because of our Christianity. We need to work hard. And Paul said, this working hard farmer, he is the first to share the first crop of his, of his farm. Paul brings the picture of hard working person. In the book of uh, Corinthians, in the book of Corinthians, uh, chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58, the Bible states that we, the labor in the Lord is not in vain. And what we need to understand, as we work for the Lord, it is not in vain. And so, we need to work hard as a Christian. We need to work hard as a Christian, working towards our salvation, 
working to want our Christianity, working to want our services to God. Remember, I just told you just the other day that service to humanity is service to God. What we are serving God today, how we are serving God today, through what he had created, we are serving him. And so, this hard-working farmer is the first to share the crop of his farm. As I continue and as I finish, here, this farmer, he is patient. This farmer, he is faithful. This farmer has a future, have a hope for the future harvest. So, brothers, as a Christians, we need to be strong. We need to have patience. We need to have faith. We need to be focused as a farmer who prepare and plant and wait them patiently to the Lord. Paul said in verse 7, Timothy, reflect on what I am saying. Brethren, here there is another issue of reflecting and meditating upon the word of God. The reason because when we reflect, when we meditate upon, the Bible says God will continue giving us understanding more and then. Paul said to Timothy and verse 7, reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight. So, brethren, let us reflect on the words of God, that we need to be like a soldier who is in active service, like we need to be like a strong authority who learns according to the rule, and here we are running according to God's rule, and also we need to be strong and we need to be firm, like a, a strong farmer who is patient. So, Christians, for you and I to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, we need to rely on God. We need to learn and teach faithfully word of God. We need to have and demonstrate the attitude of a good soldier. We need to compete like an authority following God's rule. We need to be working hard like a farmer. Then we wait patiently. And lastly, we need to reflect and meditate day and night upon the words of God. May the Lord bless you as you be coming strong in the grace that it is in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to hear your word. O oh Lord, we pray that teach us how to be strong in your Son, Jesus Christ, and teach us, Heavenly Father, how to be like a soldier and a faithful one. Help us to be like an authority. Help us to be like a hard-working farmer in your ministry. And all this, Lord, we pray in the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord, uh, brothers and sisters. In absentia, the vicar once again was here to ensure that spiritually we all remain fed. We miss you all, and we look forward when this coronavirus, the cloud of coronavirus, shall come to pass and we shall be able to assemble together. So thank you so, so much, uh, Reverend Andrew, for the spiritual nurture that you have continued to give the congregations of this church, even when they are seated in their homes. We miss to be together. We miss to come and be seated where we normally prefer. We miss to come and listen to our great choir making great presentations. We miss moments where we will come and share Holy Communion together. We miss the praise and worship team. We miss the Merode sisters. We miss, we miss so, so, so much. That's why deep in our hearts, our prayer continue, that this cloud of darkness shall come to pass so that together as a memorial family, we shall be together praising God together, worshiping God together, and feeling the warmth that we've always experienced in the past. I would love to make one plea 
that even as we sit home, the church work continues to make a demand the electricity, uh, the pay, the salaries, and all that for our clergy, the diocesan quarter, and the church continues to hurt. The Bible reminds us, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. We cannot pretend that there are needs in this church, needs that shall need to be addressed by you and me. We request you, either through the Mpesa or in whichever other means, do what you can. Do the very, very best you can and ensure that the church financially remains supported. We need your support. We cannot pretend about it. We need and we want to ask again, as the Lord may talk to you, even when you are at home, even during this very financial uh, strive and strain, we are all aware about that. Do the best you can. Lastly, a family that prays together stays together. Remember to pray for the family of memorial. Remember to continue praying for our vicar. Remember to continue praying for our bishop. Let's continue praying for one another. Most important, let's keep our families warm. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray, Christians, for our needs. Gracious and an everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for all that time, and we want to thank you for, gift, for the gift of life. We want to thank you for a uh, gift of salvation. We want to thank you for your blessings upon us and upon our life. Even at this particular time, we are assured of your blessings, that you have been so gracious, you have been so kind, you have been so merciful, and you have been so loving. Heavenly Father, we want to continue committing ourselves unto thee. Be it at home, King of Glory, we pray for your blessings together with our families. We want to pray for your blessings upon our jobs and our day-to-day -day activities, O King of Glory. Our Lord, we pray that you shower us with your blessings all the days of our life. Gracious Father, we commit our desires unto thee. We commit our challenges unto thee, O Heavenly Father. We commit our problems unto thee. Heavenly Father, some of us, maybe they are going a very difficult time. We pray, God, that you are going to see them through. Gracious Lord, some of us are sick. We pray that you quicken your healing power and touch the healing part of their body so that in Jesus' name they may receive healing, O God. O Lord, we pray that you continue touching our family. We pray for your love. We pray for your peace. We pray for joy. We pray for the care. We pray for thy protection, O Lord. Even in the pandemic that is in all over the whole world, we pray for thy protection, O King of Glory, in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that you protect our children, those who are with us, and those who are maybe abroad, we pray that you bless them. Heavenly Father, be with us. And now, the peace of God that surpasses all other study. Keep your heart and mind in the knowledge of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And now, may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and be among you now and forever. Amen. Amen.